All right, when you go to uh, glaze your work, you obviously want to know what color you're going to get. So we have a whole bunch of test tiles, uh, little bowls all around the studio, or all around the shelves, and they start out at least lined up with the pieces that they are for. This one is says on the side, Woodman Clark Celadon. This is Woodman Clark Celadon. It should be right here. Now beware, if other people are working in the studio, they sometimes move things. So check, read the words on them. Um, but I can pick up this test tile and read what it is, or look at where it is, and I know that Woodman Clark Celadon is going to look like that. Now, a couple of our glazes have more than one test tile next to them. This is Faffy's Copper Red, and so is this. And so one of the things you need to understand about how glazes work is that the atmosphere of the firing is important. <clears throat> All of these are cone 10 glazes. <coughs> they melt at cone 10, which is about 2350, 2300 degrees or so, and, uh, and, sorry, and, and all of them melt at that temperature, at that cone 10. They don't melt at a lower temperature, they don't melt at bisque, but they do melt at cone 10. But we can fire two different atmospheres. This is a reduction atmosphere, and in a reduction atmosphere we reduce the amount of air available in the kiln. In an oxidation atmosphere, we give the kiln plenty of air. And that actually affects the color of the glaze <coughs> in both of those firings. So this glaze has copper in it. Same glaze, same pieces. This glaze has copper in it. And the copper, when there's not very much air available, will, um, will turn red. Uh, think of a copper penny in your pocket. It's a darker kind of color. When that copper has lots of air available to it, think of the Statue of Liberty, it turns kind of a greenish color. Now there's one other thing that's different about these tiles, and hopefully I grabbed the right one. Notice that the clay is different. Both of these are in an oxidizing atmosphere, but one of these is porcelain clay and one of these is stoneware clay. Usually we try to put a P and a, and a S on these, um, but you can also tell by comparing the colors. These ones here, porcelain with a P and stoneware without, are both in a reduction atmosphere. Now, one of the other things that is completely legitimate for you to try to figure out colors is you can ask. So I'm happy to answer lots and lots of questions about glaze colors, even if I've answered them already. That's fine with me. I'd rather you ask the question and know what's going to happen than not ask the question and be confused. Other ways to figure out what color you've got. The bucket here, I'm going to read Ty's Mystic Violet. It says, opaque glaze, which means it's not transparent obscures texture, works best when mixed with contrast or contrasting with other glazes on the surface. Faffy's Copper Red, it says it's an ox blood red. Reduction, varied tomato to blood red. Oxidation, transparent green. So you can read the buckets and they give you a little bit of a description. We've also got a glazing handbook in the studio that has these crib sheets and they list some of the colors that you're likely to get. But legitimately, another thing you can do is walk around the studio, find a piece, hey, I like that glaze, and ask if anybody knows what that glaze is. Your classmates who've taken classes before know more about the glazes than you do, so if they're in intermediate advanced. Um, some of our studio helpers who've been around a long time, work studies or somebody in Les's position. Um, and of course, I know the glazes pretty well, so you can ask about those things. So once you've figured out what gla oh, uh, one more thing. If you can look inside this bucket, um, you can see the color of the glaze, um, and it looks kind of gray. Now this says it's going to be a violet matte, and my test tile shows that it's going to look like this. So don't trust the color that you see in the bucket. The glazes are going to change color, so that the color they look when they're unfired isn't a good, uh, a good indication of what it's going to look like. All right? Now, when you're ready to start glazing, you're going to want to mix your glazes. Glazes settle very quickly, the materials settle, so there's a little bit of water on top of this gray material, and if I stick my stick in immediately, we're going to find that it's thick down there and then it's just wet on the top. <coughs> I need to stir this up, and I've got a bunch of sticks over here you guys can use. There's also a few whisks, the whisks are more work to clean, so I tend to recommend sticks. Um, but you're going to stir this up. Now, even if you come over here and you know that somebody else was glazing five minutes ago, you still need to stir. If you've stirred and then you got a phone call and you went and answered it and you've been away for ten minutes or five minutes, you still need to stir. So once you've stirred these up pretty well, and pretty well is when you can no longer see water on the top 
and when there's no longer a difference between how the stick looks here and here. Once you've got that stirred up, it's going to start to settle immediately. So you stir it up well the first time, but then each time you come back to it, you leave the stick in and you do a little bit more stirring. So when you go to glaze, it's a lot of work. It's, uh, it's a, a pain to get these glazes ready. So I often recommend you glaze with other people. If you come back here and somebody else has already started stirring the glazes, and you glaze for a while with them, at the end you say, hey, are you done with the Thai's Mystic Violet? Because I'm, I'm done. And if they say, yes, I'm done, you say, I would offer to wash the sticks for you. Uh, set up and clean up is a lot of work, so be nice to your classmates. Don't come in and take advantage of all the work they've done. You offer to help, if you do take advantage, offer to help them clean up, because clean up's a lot of mess, a, a lot of fun, you know, a lot of work as well. So we're going to mix up these glazes. Um, we know what they look like because we've looked at the tiles. And in the next video, I'll show you how to prepare the pieces for glazing.